What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan Elizabeth Nelson, and this is Men's Planning, where I explain things. So get out your pitchforks and your torches because I am positive I'm going to piss off a whole bunch of you guys, if not all of you, because today I'm talking about the migrant caravan that is coming up to the U.S. right now from Honduras. So there's been a lot of stuff in the news about this recently. There's been some fake tweets that have gone viral that have said things about a police officer being injured while trying to hold off the Honduran refugees or, or migrants. And that was a fake, well, it wasn't a fake image. It was a real image, but it was from 2012 and it had nothing to do with anything that's happening right now. There's been a lot of people on the left that are screaming on social media that this isn't, this isn't bad people, this is mommies and daddies and babies and trying to protect their families and all of this stuff. And yeah, you know what, it's true. But that's not the point. And the other, the other side of it, including our president, everybody on the right is saying that there's Muslims coming up and that there's terrorists coming up and that this is, they're trying to put this whole other slant on it that has nothing to do with anything. And it's provably false. But, you know, that's our president and the American right these days. They don't care if something's true. They just care if it can rile up a group of people. So we've got that on the other side. I'm somewhere right in the middle. Honduras is a dangerous country. And I did a little bit of research because I hadn't really given a lot of thought or knowledge to Honduras since 2009 when they had their coup. But I did a little research just you know, getting ready for this video. And it turns out that Honduras is really violent. It's really bad. It's the number one murder, murder country in the world. That's bad. That is very bad. There's a lot of gang violence. There's a lot of violence towards women. So it's not good. It is not good. And there's a lot of poverty. The problem with the migrant caravan is, is that living in a dangerous area, living where there's a lot of gang violence, living where there's poverty, does not qualify you for asylum. That's the problem. And I don't know if these people are unaware of this fact or if the people who were in charge of putting the caravan together were unaware of this fact or what the deal is. But the fact of the matter is, is that the only way that any of these 7,000 people are going to be able to stay in the United States is if they cross illegally, don't ask for asylum and manage to stay hidden. That's not a good situation for them whatsoever because what you need to what qualifications you need to have to actually be granted asylum into the United States is you have to have a well-founded fear of persecution based on your race, your religion, your nationality, your membership into a particular social group or political opinions. These people live in violent areas and they're poor. It sucks to be them. It does. And there's a lot that we can do humanitarian effort in the U.S. to make things better for them. And there is some money, some U.S. money going down there, but people in the U.S. aren't doing a lot to try to make things better in Central America. They don't go there because they don't want to get shot. They're, they're afraid of the violence. I get it. But it is not the United States' responsibility to take in every poor person or every person that lives in a bad neighborhood. And from what the Hondurans are saying when they're being interviewed and things, you know, I'm a hard worker. I'm looking for work. They're not going to be able to work. I mean, that's, that's something that it's just not going to happen. You're not welcomed in and given a job. That's not gonna happen. It's unrealistic. The best thing that they're gonna be able to do is work under the table on a farm or doing some manual labor. And we all know that the people who hire migrant workers, illegal migrant workers, do not pay them a fair wage. They do not treat them fairly or even as human beings. They're treated, I mean, plow horses are treated better than a lot of migrant workers on farms and things. Or like with women, they could work as a maid or something like that. They're not going to be treated well. It's a fact, but it's a fact that they seem to not be aware of. The whole idea of America being the land of milk and cookies with golden paved streets and opportunity for everybody. A lot of that's our fault because of what we put out on TV and things. So when other countries look at us, they see big houses, big cars, everybody's wearing designer labels and everybody's doing well. They never show pictures of rundown trailer parks. You never see that really in a TV show. What we should be doing is we should be piping shows like My Name is Earl down to Honduras so that they get a more accurate view of what America's like. And yeah, I saw John kind of smile because we really like that show. It's a very good show. But the whole point is, is that if they were seeing things like My Name is Earl is their imagery for what America is really like, and if they saw actual footage of like walking through Manhattan, 
No offense to Manhattan, I love the city. I absolutely love it. It's great, it's vibrant, it's bright, it's everything. But you ever notice that they never show anything below like this high on street level in Manhattan unless it's like, you know, law and order or something? It's because it's a shithole. Broken sidewalks, gum, gum staining everywhere, trash everywhere, it's gross. It's not the bright, shiny beauty that you see on TV. It's very well edited and very well framed when they do these things. That's the problem is that we're putting out an image of all of this land of opportunity and stuff. There's barely enough opportunity for American people. There's very little, and everybody's always talking about like the unemployment rates and the job rates and things. Unless you're in a decent urban area, there's not a lot of job opportunity. Your job opportunity is McDonald's, Walmart, Burger King. You know, it's not a great environment right now and we're going downhill. And if we're getting an influx of unskilled workers or workers that are only skilled in things like agricultural, which Honduras is a mainly agricultural nation. On one hand, I kind of agree with that because I don't know a lot of American people that are aspiring to be farmers and so they're not willing to go work on a farm, especially if they don't own it, just being like a farm hand. It's not a glamorous job, it's not a fun job, it's a lot of hard work and there's very little money. So maybe they will be able to get some jobs in there. But like I said, again, I'll backtrack to what I said before. They don't treat the migrant workers very well at all. So there's that. And then these people that are all bringing their kids up. What do you plan on doing with your children? They can't be enrolled in school without paperwork. So there, there's this whole thing that their, their legal status is just going to be a complete and total nightmare. They're coming here with these ill-formed ideas in their head of what they're going to be able to get, what they're going to be able to do. And the fact is that 75% of all asylum applications coming from Central America are just rejected, period. So maybe 25% of them might be able to get in. That's about 1,200. But all the rest of them are going to be sent packing all the way back to Honduras. I have a big issue with how this whole thing is coming down right now because it's dividing us right before the midterm election, which is just a whole nightmare in and of itself. But on top of that, you've got the people on the left that want to welcome everybody in with open arms. You're being unrealistic. Most people on the left are well-educated, and I am well-educated. I'm also a humanitarian. I want people to be able to have better. I want people to be able to live better. But the fact of the matter is, is that America isn't really offering much better for these people. But they're going to come in, and they're going to be here while they're waiting for asylum. They're going to get used to being here. They're going to start making lives settle in. Some of them are going to get into relationships, possibly get, you know, have children. And then what happens? when their asylum case is heard and they fail and they have to be sent back to Honduras. Think about that for a second. These are issues that need to be considered. Now, I'm not on Trump's side at all. I'm not on the right side at all, but I am on the side of the law. And I am on the side of, I'm not America first, but I'm gonna say that these people will suffer, the American people will suffer, and this is a bad idea. And I've seen you know, from everything that I've read, every article that I've read, their reasoning for leaving was short-sighted, poorly thought out. A lot of people just decided as they saw the caravan was something that was happening, packed up a couple of bags, grabbed their kids, and just went. No preparation or forethought whatsoever. That is absolutely insane. And the fact of the matter is, is that they're going into a completely unknown environment where things are going to get worse. We saw what happened over the summer, and we saw what happened, how, how bad it was for parents when they had no idea where their children were. And we saw how bad it was when the kids got reunited with their parents and little kids didn't know who their parents were. They didn't recognize them after you know four, five, six months of being apart. These are all issues that need to be considered. And these are things that, if nothing else, we need to send a more accurate image of what is waiting for them in America than the bright lights and prettiness that you see on TV. Something, something's got to give because if I was a Honduran migrant right now heading up towards America, I would feel incredibly betrayed by reality when I got here and realized what an unbelievable shit show it is. Not only for us and like our political discord that's going on right now, but also for the people who are actually trying to come up here and make a better life for themselves and things. Mexico offered a lot of them to apply for asylum there, but they didn't want to. They'd be better off. That's the thing. They were welcome to apply for asylum in Mexico and they said, no, we want to go to the U.S. because you know, Golden Streets and whatever, they'd be better off. You know, with these big caravans of migrants, what's going to happen is the people on the right and the rednecks and even regular decent people are going to start meeting these caravans with violence. And 
it's because there's a lot of resentment, because there's American people can't get decent jobs, especially unskilled American people. They're having a huge hard problem with it. And I just talked about this in a previous video about white vulnerability. Things like this are what contribute to that mentality of white vulnerability. Because the white, young, young white men are going to come, they're going to see all of these immigrants coming, and they're going to be like, oh, they're going to get all the unskilled jobs, so I can't get the unskilled jobs, so I have nothing, so I'm going to be violent against these people. It's going to increase racism. It's going to increase the, the anger and the violence that's happening. There's, there's no way that I can see any of this coming out in a positive. It's just not. Anyway, that's what I have to say about this. I've been kind of torn on it for a while, but... I do think in a way, you know, a 7,000 person strong migrant caravan just plowing their way up to America, plowing their way through countries and, and the, the borders that they're, they're trying to block these people at each border and they just keep pushing through. And I think it's a little bit arrogant of them to think that they're just going to be welcomed into America with open arms. Because are you kidding me? This isn't the land of milk and honey. Ellis Island got shut down a long time ago. This is a shit show. And I get it that it's bad where you are, but you're making it worse here. It's not fair to anybody. So to my people on the left, I'm sorry. This is a very controversial opinion for me to have, even to myself. I've, I've really struggled over how I feel about this whole thing. But when I looked into the legality of it and I tried to project what's going to happen as a result of this, all I see is bad. And to the people on the right, this in no way is any indication that I will ever agree with you on anything that you have to say, because I genuinely think that most people on the right are either misguided or just cold. But yeah, I just insulted both political parties in the United States. Please don't kill me. But I told you at the beginning of the video, get your pitchforks and your torches out because I was going to piss everybody off. I think I managed to. And that means that I have accomplished my goal. Um, if you're triggered, leave me a comment. Definitely hit the like button if you agree with me. Hit the dislike if you don't agree with me. And I love you guys. Subscribe to my channel so you can see more content like this and other stuff. And definitely hit the bell so that you get notifications. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.